<laughs> Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is July 3rd, and thank you so much for coming by tonight um, on a sort of holiday. Although I think July 4th is a, a really long holiday. <laughs> it goes for a long time. Anyway, um, so um, we really appreciate you coming by. Hi, Monica. Welcome. And over there in the in the dark, um, trying to turn a light on, is uh, Jim Nordlinger. Um, he is uh, the video lead in a project that we're doing this summer. Um, and Karen Fastenpower is with us. Karen has been um, an inspiration and a supporter, and will actually be able to join us for um, uh, uh, several days. Um, at the end of our three-week project that we're doing with the New York City Writing Project. And uh, Marina Lombardo, uh, this is uh, Marina's first time here, is a fourth grade teacher. And she will be one of the five teachers who will be joining us in this project. And Jim was in her classroom, what, just two weeks ago or one week ago? One week ago. Yeah, filming, filming her students, so we can talk about that a little bit. And Monica Hardy, welcome. Monica, at least we can announce that IDEC is at a deadline on Friday, right? And if there's anybody else who wants to come announce that, they can. But or anything. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody else is coming. Okay, so we'll yeah. just kind of make that announcement and uh, feel free to jump in and and push us and make us think. And really appreciate you being here, Jim. That looks good. Okay. Is that a little better? Now he is the best lit. Right. Okay. So let me set this up. So um, in this way. So I was explaining to Marina, who's new to this, that we started uh, TTT five, over five years ago now, um, just as a um, kind of an open staff room. So in other words, a bunch of us were working on Youth Voices and doing other work together. And we said, you know what, we talked together on, um, it was at that time it was on Skype, on Skype all the time, why don't we invite other people to listen? <laughs> we're, and we weren't sure why anybody would want to. But <laughs> so we're back to that tonight. This is, um, this is like an open planning. Um, we just, we just want to open our thoughts and, to the world and kind of uh, see what's going on. Um, and that's one of the principles of Youth Voices, too, sort of like get stuff up that usually is private and and see if other people want to contribute. So if you're hearing this somehow and you want to help us and help us think, that's great. Um, so I will say a little bit more about, um, and i got to say thank you to a lot of people who supported us to be able to do this, but we just interviewed um, over the last several days, and Karen and um, Marina, wait till you meet them. They're, they're amazing. We've interviewed 14, and there's one more to interview tomorrow. Um, Daisy, by the way, Jim, is uh, going to come in tomorrow. Anyway, or I'm, I'm sorry, on Friday. On Friday, yes. on Friday. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, 14 students, and it was just, and we did it one by one, or maybe, maybe they got there at the same time. So it was really interesting to meet all of the kids and for them to meet us before the program starts. It starts on... Um, July 8th, and it goes Monday to Thursday, and it ends July 25th. Um, and well, as you listen, you'll you'll hear more about what we're what we think we're about. But one of the things that we want kids to do is find their own start with an interest or a passion, and kind of develop that in in lots of different ways this summer. And um, and then for teachers, kind of to do the same thing, the five teachers. But at some point, not right away, Marina, um, uh, kind of start um, observing the kids and thinking about what it might mean in their classrooms and kind of learning alongside them. So that's uh, a very brief introduction. Part of our design has also been to have a, and Jim has been clear that he's not just the videographer, so he's the video lead, <laughs> which is great. But but he does he does love shooting really cool shots so I they, it's good to be a camera person too I think. anyway so Jim has helped us think about um, what we might want to shoot this summer um, and how we might want to edit that and what kind of story we want to tell about this experience is that it? anybody else want to add to that brief uh, hopefully brief summary of what we've been doing 
<laughs> There's a lot more to add, but as we go, um, so and you, it's also true that you're jumping into the middle of this conversation, um, and because we we have it whenever we see each other, kind of thing. Um, so, but I want to I want to kind of be quiet. Jim and Marina, could you tell the story of Jim? You're coming to Marina's school and shooting at her school, and maybe that like start in that very concrete place. We can kind of move out into the bigger bigger things that, have, that we're thinking. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, let, um, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how. Let, Marina, do you remember? Yeah, why how you, Marina, why don't you introduce yourself a little more first? Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm Marina, and I'm a fourth grade teacher. And um, how long I, have you been a fourth grade teacher? Uh, I guess this is this was my second year, but I've always been swirling around the grades, like third, fourth, fifth, third, fourth, fifth. But this was um, the first year that I taught the same grade two years in a row. So that was different for me. <laughs> um, so you had them in third grade as well? No. No, I oh. had a brand new group of kids oh, I'm this sorry. year. It was so the first year that I taught grade. the same grade level. I heard you. Um, like two years in a row. I had always moved every year. So I started in third, and then I went to fourth, and fifth, and so on and so on. Um, so describe your class a little bit for us, your kids. Um, well, they were this past year they were a really fun bunch. They had a lot of energy. They loved to learn. Um, they loved to make things. They loved to write. Um, so just with doing this project, it was perfect for them because they were able to choose something that they really liked and enjoyed and cared about and um, worked a lot on the computer, worked together on the computer, um, and, and produced something. Most of them produced something really nice when it came down to it. Showed a lot of effort and research and thoughtfulness and voice and passion. And your kids use kid blogs, is that right? Yeah. Am I getting the name right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. At this point. Cool. Um, and so the project you were working on <laughs> was uh, letters to the next mayor, right? Um, so how did, how did that, how did they experience that as their project in some way? I mean, you just said that they were able to choose their own, but... Well, we started it after the New York State test, so, um... They liked the idea of being able to do something that was something they chose on their own, but they were like, not another essay, not another essay. So I kind of had to frame it a little differently. Um, and we just started by talking about some things that bother them in their neighborhood. Um, and then one thing that really got to the heart of a lot of kids, which they ended up investigating more, was the New York City public library budget cuts. Um, because a couple kids started to talk about that. They were avid library patrons. And, um, they just knew it, so they kind of instilled that in a lot of other kids just by sharing their own stories. So I'm just going to bridge this fast. Um, Marina and Jim and I are on a technology committee at the uh, New York City Writing Project, and Marina came in and was talking about her work with her students, and Jim said, oh, I'd love to get some film, right? Is that yeah. fair, Jim? Pick yes. it up there. So, okay. Um, I was trying to go after the idea of, you know, uh, actually hearing the students read their letters and, you know, um, and that Marina had had a, uh, what seemed like a, I guess a good plan for how she went about, um, having them prepare to do them. So, uh, my idea was to have the students actually read their letters from paper as well as see, I, I was hoping to see them at work in the, uh, in their computer room also so that you could see them you know what they were working on and uh, the first day I went over uh, first without camera to see to visit the group and to see Marina in action and uh, was awestruck by the idea of having 30 fourth graders there that she was confronting daily which I don't know how uh, how she does that but um, are there any other teachers in the room with you Marina or is it just um, you and 30 it was just me and a paraprofessional Mm -hmm. okay. well, so awestruck, I, awestruck is a very um, constructive term. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And then, um, so I went to see, and when I they, when I got there, they were working on actually comment right, Marina. They were commenting on each other's letters, and I went around and got to and um, the idea. I really the letters seem. Uh, it seemed when we were discussing the letters in in the Saturday Tech Group, it seemed like the letters we were discussing the idea of voice. And you know how individual the letters are, and whether you look at them as you know to an individual candidate or about an issue, or how does the writer you know how, if they're, from a writer's point of view and the students. Um, I guess I was going for the idea of how individual the letters, uh, you know, how individuals the letters sound from each of the students, or potentially would, and from fourth graders certainly gives it a different spin than high school students or and all that. So um, when I went over to visit, they were commenting on each other's letters, and I walked around and got to know them. Marina was very helpful, you know, obviously opened up her classroom and all that. But um, and the students were um, Marina, correct me. They were making ex you know fairly extensive commentary to the you know they weren't just simple sentences. They were you know uh, people were really commenting quite thoughtfully. Right? Am I right? Yeah, but yeah. At that point, they were like getting in there and. Complimenting and giving suggestions and yeah, and um and then the biggest hurdle was uh, then we were trying to get uh, how many the contest of how many students will bring in permission slips was uh, seemed um, a, a, um it's the backstory that you can't shoot because you can't shoot the people without permission slips so but uh <laughs> so that that was the challenge so but Marina uh, marshaled her forces and got I think was it. Thirteen permission slips out of thirty students, right? Yeah, it was about that many. Yeah. And then we, uh, so I got to know the students a little bit, or the, at least some of the things they had written. And uh, Marina, we, as I uh, kept them in their, you know, daily practice of, uh, I, not daily practice, but frequent, they get in a circle, right down near the end of the, near the smart board, right? Mm -hmm. Is that daily, pretty much, or often? I yeah, guess? that's like our main meeting area. So we, I, they then, uh, Marina went through, you know, we, uh, I shot where they went through this uh, discussion of the process, you know, what the students got out of the process and what they remembered. And they had a really nice discussion, which uh, someday someone will see parts of it, I hope. And, uh, and then I in, uh, tried to shoot them individually reading their letters. as I think we did six students or five or six students. And they then commented again in the circle led by Marina and they did you know the the letters are very uh, you know ab about the li the incorporation of research was very I mean I was uh, very impressed with the you know how well the students incorporated research and you know very concerned about libraries and the zoo and animals and um, you still I think uh, Marina had used I really the process. She used a uh, a modified version of the template from Youth Voices for, um, and they the students. I think she then took it through several stages, from what I gathered, which we have in uh, where they uh, added to the template and you know made it their own voice more. Right? Am I right, Marina? About the, um, and they did a really nice. You know, a lot of them were very strong, and you know, you really hear their. You get a sense of their backgrounds in the in the uh, and you know where their their passions come out. I think Marina called the first paragraph the passion paragraph. Oh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Am I right? And, and you hear that. In, um, what, can you talk about that? Why did you do that, or what what impact did that have? Um, well, like Jim said, the kids followed the template, um, and I did modify it for them. Um, color coded it. We all did it together. Um, it started on Microsoft Word, and then they ended up copying, pasting, and getting on the blogs that they could share with each other and work off of um, their own post. But they were, you know, they were dry and stiff and stifled, and they needed like to be, they needed more excitement. And so it was kind of like midway through the whole like unit of teaching them that I was like, okay, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna like really get back to the heart of it. Um, and I used one of the um, letters that we had posted up on Croc Doc um, mm -hmm. on the day that we had the workshop, and um, 
I forgot the name of the book it's from, but the kids looked at it, we all pulled it up, and it was just all about this girl writing in her journal and having so much voice and anger about this like situation. So they took it and they went back with their own topic and just started to free write and go back to like the original passion. So that was like all that happened all after they basically were like kind of like filling in the blanks of their template with the information that they were gathering. So um, it was good because then they were able to incorporate that and, and go back and revise. So getting getting a little bit uh, well ahead to some of the themes, you you're telling a lot of the, the student story. What we also want to tell is the teacher story and just to mention what you talked about there is that um, we've had a Youth Voices study group through the spring and um, one of the things we did is start to think about what is the genre of letters, right? So we looked at um, letter from a Birmingham jail. We looked at, you know, and then, and then we said, what other letters do you know about? And teachers just went and found really cool stuff. And Marina, you found really interesting stuff because you know letters to, for in children's books and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. So that kind of then gave you resources to bring back to your classroom. So that's part of the story we want to tell. Also, is like what teachers do together to make things happen in the classroom. Right? But could there's a lot more to tell about this story? And but the um, let's move out of it for a second and just just ask um, ask this. So. Jim can't go to every teacher's classroom who uses Youth Voices or in the writing project is doing fun stuff and shoot everything, right? Although I think he'd like to. <laughs> um, Jim is a, a, a mass shooter. <laughs> so, the, um, he, likes to, he, he, he likes to get a lot of footage. Is that right, Jim? That one definitely yeah, helps, I think. It helps, yeah. But we also need to start forming before we finish, I think. So I think that's what we want to talk about a little bit tonight. Like, what story do we want to tell um, through the video that we're putting together? So there are at least two videos we're talking about here. We're talking about some video about letters to the next mayor. We have an election going on in New York, if you um, didn't hear about it, um, and uh, this summer. And, and in, into the fall. So it'll kind of get kicked off again in the fall. So we, we could have a video, maybe, to let people know about that project um, and some of the thinking the teachers have around it. And then we have a, the summer project. And again, if I think we, we need to know enough about what this video, what story we want to tell, that Jim will know where and how to point the camera. Is that one way to think about this? And Karen, do you have something to add to that big picture? And, Monica, do you have a question? <laughs> Let's hear from the um, two of you, if you can, for a little bit. Yeah. I'm, one thing I'm interested in is sort of to what extent, if we know, is the video that's shot this summer maybe a preface to something bigger? Um, and then there's just some really interesting stuff in the chat going on about um, I'll just read some of this. So from Grace, thinking ahead um, to this evening's co conversation. Who's coordinating, by the way, with, with us in the summer program. Go ahead. So. Awesome. Um, I am curious what people would want to hear from students and teachers in such a program. What do you want to know from them? Um, we always do reflection questions. Is there anything that we should be asking to help you understand their experiences? And Peggy said she's especially interested in how this passion-based experience compares to or differs from um, regular school experiences of both teachers and students and my thing that I'm really interested in right now largely from TTT sort of bringing this together with other thoughts I'm having is just about the issue of teacher voice and sort of how how it connects to connected learning and sort of are we getting our voice out there about whatever these issues are Mm -hmm. Marina, can you can you address that question of how it compares to other school projects you did? Monica, I didn't mean to stop if you wanted to jump in. Okay. 
Um, well, you know, it, it feels like sometimes the kids really don't have a choice over what they can work on. Um, and this was important, as like well, I said. Why is that? I mean, it's the testing you mentioned. A yeah, bit. it's, is there it's more definitely that? partly that. It's um, performance tasks. Um, one thing we did this year was we um, worked like some thematic units in with um, our performance tasks. And I mean, I do whatever I can to get the kids excited about whatever they have to do. Um, and usually, you know, I can get them to buy into it, so that's good. Um, but this is different because, you know, they, they were able to really pick what they wanted to do. Um, while also doing a project that was very similar to the things that they had to do. You know, the other performance tasks they had to do, they had to put an essay together, they had to provide evidence, they had to go back and look for um, information that proved a main idea or supported their opinion. So I felt like this was more of an authentic way for them to be able to use those skills that they had worked on throughout the year and refine them in using a topic of their choice. See, I, I think that's a, an important point too, right? It's like not, well, I don't know how to say this, but, but the question back, I, I would say back is that do you think you could do more projects like this and still accomplish those performance tasks and get kids ready for tests? You know what I'm saying? Like, did you find that doing this other kind of project and you know, accomplish the sort of standards-based direction also? I, I don't mean to, I don't know. Yeah, okay. it definitely does. I mean, it's it, it can be a little challenging for the kids, especially with my age group, um, finding current research and finding research that they can um, read and understand just because they're fourth grade and a lot of things they were pulling up were just from websites and probably articles from newspapers that might be geared for, you know, an older audience. Um, but the thing I really appreciated about the kids was that they were really into it, so they were more willing to look at some of these resources that they found and um, try to make some sort of sense of it, um, which I think that just shows, like, the inner motivation that they had to do this. So, Marina, I'm interested in um, talking about students being often being restricted in terms of choice and following their passion. I'm wondering if you feel that as a teacher in the classroom. Do I feel that they're restricted, or no? Do you no, feel that yourself, you're restricted right? yeah. well, as a teacher? I mean, <laughs> well, you know, there's things that we have to do. We have to follow curriculum, we have to follow the things that need to be done um, in order for these kids to be prepared for whatever a performance task, a state test, but um, I guess I, I kind of feel like um, no matter what, like I, I wiggle it in somehow, like I get this, whether it's the science or the social studies, like they're, I just, I don't know, I rack my brain and I have to find an angle no matter what it is. Um, and that's just that's just what I do. I work within what I have to do. Yeah, I think that's really admirable and well stated. I, I'm interested in, and I don't know if this video is a place to explore this, but I'm interested in that sort of parallel thread of wh what's happening to teacher choice and teacher voice in the classroom, and you know how that affects everything else. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, though, because, you know, I, Marina, I, I remember how nervous, it wasn't just the testing, it was all of the um, quality review stuff, right, that this school had to go through. Yeah. Um, that you were had to prepare for, and there's a lot of work around that, is that right? And, and so there's pressure there, too. So you want kids to succeed, you want your school to be successful, so I don't know if you're thinking about your voice much, you know, I don't, I, maybe, but I mean, 
Maybe it's the tension between preparing students for, and I was sort of hanging on Marina's words when she said preparing students for, and I was, you know, there's preparing students for the sort of test and the school requirements and whatever that, and then preparing students for what we think they need to be prepared for, whatever real life or whatever that is, and sort of, you know, where are we as an educational community around those issues? I, I feel like I'm hearing so many teachers who I think are fabulous, wonderful teachers who are saying, I'm not doing fabulous, wonderful teaching right now, and my students aren't getting benefits because of all these, you know, whatever all these constraints are. And I'm hearing that in individual conversations, but, you know, the big conversation in the media is all sort of negative about schools. And, like, where ha I'm interested in exploring that tension and maybe bringing some of the good stories out and just, you know, getting the story out there of, like, what's really going on in schools right now. And, you know, I mean, everybody has a different story, so I don't know if that's something that resonates with other people or not, but that's kind of something I'm thinking about right now. Monica, can I, can I pull you into this for a second? So, I'm, Marina doesn't know you, but, um, you know, you want to kind of say, well, say it yourself, but that we shouldn't pay attention to the assessments and so forth. And Marina is, like, trying to figure out the angles and the cracks where she can get decent work done, right? So where's the narrative between those two positions? I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Is that a fair question to ask you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, always on the one side, but always wrestling with what do you do right now today right. and what's the vision that we hope you know comes in a hastening way um, I, I think there's nothing stronger I mean I'm convinced 100% that if we want if we want to have people who are happy and living productive lives and we've got to tap into um, a gut passion that you, you use that word. Um, the only way that we're going to get it to be a sustainable, sustainable, you know, I'm getting up every day because I, I have to do this. I have to write because it's my voice and I have to share this, is if we do tap into their choice. So like even the questions that um, I was on the ed tech talk live for chat for just a bit, um, like the question of what do we want to hear from students, you know, in my mind now, that's a raised eyebrow because we're already, the kids know that there's something hanging out there, even if we say it's, you know, about their passion. The fact that we're talking about what do we want to get out of them or can we wiggle around and, and get this checked off, you know. It, it's, a, it's a hard balance right now because, you know, you're beholden to what you're beholden to until we stand up to that. Um, so what, what I'm going to offer here, um, mm -hmm. I mean, Youth Voices is amazing, and I would offer that. You, you having younger kids, um, what Angela Myers is doing now, um, Choose to Matter, and the focus is just what makes your heart break, what, what really matters to you, um, and focus on that. And the, only, the main reason that I want to offer that is, because the tension is that you're so busy that you can't do the things that matter to you as a teacher. It's not that anybody doesn't have the genius to do it or the desire. It's that you're too busy because of other things that are expected of you. So what Angela is offering is you sign up for a quest and then you get the support um, of other mentors. So it's not just a, a kid left to searching on the site for articles that might relate to them. Um, they're connecting them to amazing mentors. Um, so if you go to the, the link that I just threw in and look at Quest, um, kids can submit quests, what matters to them. So there's, so there's a, you know, there's so many now things happening, and I think the more that we talk and share those, the more it will, we won't feel the burden of, how do I do the stuff that they're asking me to do today in my class and still be the teacher that I want to be. Mm -hmm. I think there's a huge amount of tension there, and I, you know, I feel I feel conflicted myself of raising these issues because I I know how hard it is in classrooms right now, and I've actually done a whole bunch of writing that I haven't published because I feel like 
it just sounds presumptive. You'll never get another I, I just, invitation if you do? No, sorry. <laughs> I just I'm don't just know, kidding. but it, it seems so important. And the thing that the thing that scares me the most is sort of hearing these back conversations about how awful things are and like teachers not doing what they know is right for kids and seeing really good teachers drop out of teaching. I mean that just that breaks my heart. And I I feel like as a community, like we need to do something I, I don't know, but it's hard. I mean, I can say that, and it's not like I don't know how hard it is. And, you know, we talked on the teacher voice thing. People can get fired. People can, I mean, it's it's real hard stuff. So I don't want to, you know, I'm really conscious of, like, not wanting to sound like I'm trivializing See, how hard this is. Could I complicate that sort of teachers can get fired and, and ask Marina? I mean, Marina, you're becoming a leader in your school, would you say? Other teachers look up to you for curriculum, and you help make the curriculum, right? Is that I've, fair? I've, I mean, I've, I've done some little things with the curriculum, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not like, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know well, can I, can I give one another kind of example that we've been talking about as we've been planning this summer? Um, Jim teaches uh, ninth graders, and a lot of our... Um, kids coming into the program, or about half of them, are ninth graders coming up to 10th grade. And in New York State, is it true, Jim, that the global happens in 10th grade in most yeah. schools? Yes. So, so global history is this, like, overwhelming body of information, as you can imagine, that kids are supposed to keep learning for two years and then take a really difficult test at the end. Is that fair? Well, I, I don't know how difficult it is, but it's, it's not, as you can imagine, it's not a wonderful test. So what's happened in Jim's class and, and in other classes, Jim, correct, I, I'm just seeing this from the outside, so correct me as I go, but is that a lot of what happens in English classes now is, is that it kind of follows the, his, the sort of ancient history perspective and... So they read Gilgamesh and they read, you know, and, and Jim did a really wonderful project around medieval times and so forth. But that's a whole different curriculum design than what I do around Youth Voices, which is, you know, where's your passion? What do you want to inquire, inquire about? And then here are some processes like detox, like, like um, annotating articles, like, you know, but they're... So, I do, I, do, I do admit, <laughs> or whatever, or think about how I think processes need to be mentored, but content not. Um, so that's one thing to think about. But, you know, we try, but, I, but, but if, I, I'm almost done, Jim. Okay. But if, if, I, if we have like a ninth grade teacher who has this, and we, we do, we have Jim and we have his, um, the, the woman who teaches um, the global history class right next to him and they work together. Um, this summer, and we do this like follow your passion, youth voices thing. Aren't the, aren't those teachers going to say at some point, yeah, but wait, how's this covering Mesopotamia and this and this and this? You know, um, so there's got to be somewhere in the school for both, I guess. I don't, Jim, go ahead. <laughs> well, we the way we um, I re I love processes too, and what we tried to you know, and the global exam actually uh, privileges or demands. A sort of understanding of process in a way, even, but, and um, and I also really like history, but that you know, right. but, um, it we try. I tried very hard to mostly. It was very focused on the process of you know reasoning processes, writing processes, and we tried very hard. Nancy would. Uh, I shouldn't who's, speak. Who's Nancy. the global history teacher? Go ahead. Right. Yeah. And Nancy would you know she'd make sure that the uh, covering the the uh, material or that we were covering the material to some degree or whatever but we were also very much including trying very much to include the personal you know the students personal lives and some or not personal lives you know current situations trying to make analysis you know uh, analogies or but not force analogies on them we were trying to get them to ask the questions and it's it's enormously hard work in terms of planning but we I don't um we were very focused on I, I was always uh, very focused on the process, you know, like how are you thinking? How'd you get this? 
or at having they were asking questions or as much as possible trying to make them ask questions or have you know listening to their questions what were they really getting and it um and i sometimes think that uh that it it's uh as much is it you know is learning seen from the outside you know is it are do people recognize when students are learning or when the teachers are succeeding in ways or learning themselves the, and the, the value of it in the classroom and how much of it's actually seen by others who observe the classroom you know marina came up i shouldn't marina you can yell at me at, at the end but um, marina came, i thought the student her students did a you know mar you know amazing job for fourth you know for fourth grade developing these letters that were passionate and organized but also you know full of wonderful ideas and, and you know uh and reflected forth, you know, their ages, you know, and things they were concerned about. And Marina still came out to me, and she was like, "Do you think they did okay? Were those essays all right? I don't even know." And I thought I was, you know, it was amazing. They were, and do, do people really know when things have gone well? You know, I, and I, I the 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 humanities approach that we took was very much, uh, you know, I was trying to, in spite of the global exam wanting the students to like the stuff, you know, like inquiring, and so, you know. So I was trying to go, you know, uh, to say, yes, they have this global exam, but let's not ruin everything for them, you know, the, in, in a sense. I was, you know. To, so uh, so can I just, uh, so yes. I think what you're saying is that it breaks your heart when you see some of the wonderful history Kind of being simplified or yeah yeah and, over? yes mm -hmm. absolutely take you know taken up you know brought down to the barest you know meaning meaningless things and the the history is missed you know or run over uh, in many ways and I think it, that's a you know tremendously a big problem but Sabrina can we can we ask you to think about that like that moment that you were talking about and. Is it a matter of, you know, the kids? There's, there's, there isn't an an, a, an outside accountability structure around these letters to the next mayor, right? So how do you know you're doing well? Is that the issue, or what? What do you think? Well, I was just nervous with all the cameras and everything. <laughs> um, I'm glad I, we got the video back in here. Go ahead. Yeah, right. <laughs> One thing that was. Um, yeah, I, I think I say that about like everything. Is this okay? okay you know, but sure. <laughs> but um, I I know because I can see the difference in what they what they write, the amount that they put down, the like I said, like the the feelings surrounding it, the work that they wanted to do to make it happen, um, all of that. Um, I think makes it okay. The fact that they're like building up towards these. Um, Common Core standards ideas that they have to do um, that you know maybe they're not 100% ready for, but they're they're trying it, and the effort is there. So um, just in comparing things that they did in the fall and what they did here, for many of them it was a huge difference. And I I know that they've progressed over the year, um, but also they they were able to kind of go in their own direction with it. So there was something more there. I even I have to say, even within you know uh, certain of the students who um, I thought might have been, not been strong readers were you know jumping in to read their own material and you know the, and tying it to you know, it just they were beginning to even tie it to larger issues. I, one one boy was uh, read about the libraries and I thought he you know he was. Edging on to the ideas of you know uh, edu you know the importance of education and things like this, he was really getting into large issues, which I think then could you know uh, become extended into other areas. I guess you know, if you had more time. For it. Yeah, some of them definitely took that like so what kind of approach. Like so, what makes this such a big deal? And there were a couple kids that definitely went in that direction. Like the library is important part of my education. Um, so it's like they took this idea and they started to, you know, understand like how it could impact their lives. It's part, one point of saying is part of my family history, and I thought there you're starting to touch on 
large, you know, very important ideas, you know, and things like that. But um, that are so that there's a tie. I guess what I'm there's a wonderful tie. I think very much like the writing project. There's a, you start where the students are, and they sort of edge themselves into these other, you know, more global, you know, global history or other things. They if you start, you know, like the writing projects and Youth Voices, I think does so well is it starts where the students are and moves them into these other areas and or they move themselves into other areas through processes and all of this. But it it's so often not recognized as progress, it seems to me, or it's not sufficiently recognized somehow that in the community maybe? I don't know. So maybe that's the challenge of this video. I mean if you could show this in the video that people could see it and say this is wonderful and we should all celebrate this and this is you know this is preparing students for real world and civic engagement and whatever I think that would be a huge triumph for this video. Well I mean, if we can get there with the video but also I you know like um, not to I, I don't mean to keep what, is, what do you mean if you can get there with video? Well, I mean, if, uh, if you can successfully capture that, um, uh, I'd be thrilled. That would be wonderful. Uh, but, you know, um, it, and it, um, we can get there. I'll, but I, I'm the marina, you know, the, the I, it's so, I think, not well understood. It, or it's not clear what the learning is. And, you know, at, and to make that more clearly understood in, by... I love this, you know, as Paul, the civilians, people who are not in the classroom, and to make it understood is not easy. Yeah, and um, but I do think the video could bring, you know, that there is progress being made by, you know, under amazing circumstances. Mm -hmm. Which, which I wanted to ask a little bit about, um, Marina. Did your class start with thirty kids in September yeah. or? Yeah, yes. you start so so it more or less stayed there. How do you, how do you feel? I mean, to my ears, thirty is pretty big for an elementary school class, but but it may be that down down the street there's even bigger classes. I don't know, but I, so yeah, I think we can go up to thirty two. Uh -huh. I think it can go up to thirty two. But do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> or or. Well, or how, you're managing it, obviously, but yeah. Or are you? <laughs> do kids get lost, or you know, what do you think about the numbers? Um, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything. No, just, it's, yeah. it was um, probably one of the bigger classes, the biggest class I've ever had. Um, I've had up to 27, um, and again, the the numbers teetered a little bit between 28, 29, 30. Mm -hmm. I ended with 30. Um, it was, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's like a whirlwind. And, and I kind of like it that way because it's just, there's so much happening and it's, it's exciting. Um, but I really do have to put a lot of effort into how I want to deliver my instruction for, for the kids because there are so many different types of learners in there at so many different levels. And I can't have a kid just sitting, not doing anything because... They have to have something to do that connects. Um, and this past year, because there were so many of them, I did a lot of thematic teaching. Um, my goal being that I wanted these kids to all be connected um, through topics, through history, through the environment, um, and doing more community building things so that they create an environment of, of authentically wanting to help each other and and things like that. Could you, what, what were those themes again? The, um, the environment is one. Well, like I, I kind of go with whatever I get a little glimmer of from the children. Um, we had to, we were doing like um, like a test prep essay on the Dust Bowl, and they really had no concept of what the Dust Bowl was. And um, all it took was I, I think it was on Teacher Tube. I found um, a video that someone had made of tons of stills from the Dust Bowl and in the background it was the Kansas song um, Dust in the Wind and I just showed it to the kids just so they had a visual and they were like obsessed with the song they made me play it like every day and then they found it themselves on the computer and they wanted the lyrics 
And all of a sudden, they wanted to know more about the Dust Bowl. Like, they couldn't believe that it had happened and the photos they saw. So I kind of started to say, well, what, what can I do with this? And still within what I have to do. And um, I, I try to make it work like that so that they're all together and they all have a point of entry. That's a really interesting story. So they got, they got passionate about something you brought to them. Is that a fair... I don't know if we, we don't have to use the word passionate there, but they got excited about it. Um, but yeah, it was I mean, something they, you brought them, right? And and I think we've all had that experience too. I mean, we hope we have that experience a little bit. So I don't know. Where's the role for that? And but then but then you're saying it wasn't part of the standard curriculum either. So no, is that right? It wasn't, but it came from an activity that they had to do um, during the test preparation time, and and we we went with it. And um, you know, I we were also kind of getting ready to do a unit on historical fiction, so it kind of like lent itself to it that I could do like a model topic with them um, before they had to all do their historical fiction unit on the American Revolution. So, you know, did do something a little bit different. Um, and, you know, we read Karen Hess's book, um, Out of the Dust, and it kind of promoted the idea of, like, writing narrative poetry. And um, it, it really, it really, I think it absolutely helped them stay focused throughout, you know, those last couple of months that can be hard. And um, I don't know, I always feel like when I do the things, you know, when I really listen to them and I can adapt their interests with, you know, what they have to learn, then they're more willing to do the things that they absolutely have to do because they have that time to also explore what they want to learn, too. Um, that was very <laughs> eloquently stated. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's that ad adaptation from interest to what they have to do that um, that's hard to capture, but also the citizen, average citizen doesn't know about. Like they know about the standards, they know about the tests, and, and they think that those of us who are talking about interest and passion are just not connected at all. And, and it's that's what teaching is about. It's about bringing the passions up to what is required in some way, I think. But so is that sort of the theme or a theme, Jim, that we're looking for? So can we? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds I like. Good. I like it. I'm writing it down. Okay. So, Marina, I, I had a way to, to to bring the video back here with this question. Did you have to explain why this guy was coming into video your class to any parents? And if you did, what did you say? <laughs> or what would you say? To you? Like what? What? What do you well, think we're doing? <laughs> no, like I sent a letter home when we started the um, the project, and they all knew that the kids were on the blog, but because it was a different format, although we didn't get the letters up yet. <laughs> I, I still got um, you this month, right? So we'll get it. We'll get. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, they, what when the kids met Jim? That, that's when they really, I think, were like, whoa, like, this this could really happen. Um, they were involved in, like, another project during the year with uh, a the Asia Society and the studio and the school. So um, they had also had another exciting experience they were a part of where their artwork was in the Asia Society Museum. Um, so I think it kind of, like, was another layer on this exciting media type of thing that they were doing this year. And when they met him and... Um, knew that like he, you know, he could be filming them, and then we threw in that he also like had some experience working with Jim Henson, and those kids are really obsessed with like Jim Henson and the Muppets and stuff. Um, I think it really excited a lot of the kids of the possibilities. Um, and I explained to them even when I was um, alone with them, I you know I explained like you know this might be a part of a video and it. <laughs> It might be seen by other teachers who might want to do this project with um, their students in the fall, and you know, 
This is just you, you're you're explaining what you did and how it worked for you and how you liked it. So um, yeah, so, but we sent the consents home, so we didn't really have any questions about it. So let me push the audience question on that a little bit because even this project, which is which is kind of bounded, right? In, in, in some ways, um, more than some other Youth Voices projects, uh, could be, I mean, the video could be for, again, you, you, you keep saying the, the citizen, is that, <laughs> um, I, so, I think more like the civilian, like we're in a The war. civilian, I don't know why I can't hold on to that word, thank you. We're in the army, and. We're in the army, and this is a, so even, so Jim, let me just put it, say this, even this, which seems to be about, I mean, what Marina says, it's, it could it could be a video, so other teachers might get excited about this project too. But I think it'd be more interesting on some level if we could make it a video for the civilians <laughs> about, you know, why are these teachers, so it's like the teachers are the subjects, not the audience. Like, why are these teachers and why are these students doing this stuff around the mayor's race, right? And what are the and what are they really thinking? What are their voices? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That seems really good. You know, the uh, the interview with Marina they did afterwards. She's talking about how she approached it and what where the students. Who came did the interview? You did or that I interviewed Marina afterwards. Okay. And that she, uh, you know, just alone in the room, and she really took um, she took the audience through the process. And then also the Saturday, you know, the two Saturdays that we did the tech group on the letters, a lot, you know, you get the idea of how the teachers are, you know, the, uh, what they're, that it's beyond just the letters, that you take, we're taking it into different areas. And all. It, that seems, it's getting clearer that way. I think. It's, it's there. I think this, just the letters goes beyond, it, it shows the civilians or the, or the citizens, you know, whatever. It, show, it shows what teachers are going through. It's beyond the, the letters just are a wonderful, you know, a very good example, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the, you know, the passion, you know, the, the, you can really see in the fourth graders that, you know, the, uh, the passion about certain things. Like one girl was talking about the, uh, the pollution in the water and you could, she was very upset about the, the animals being harmed. And you could see, uh, you know, this was, she was taking it, it was jumping into other air, you know, uh, it was, de you know, it had touched her, and you could see it as a piece of right, it, that she was growing in other ways other than just doing this, uh, you know, the letter to the mayor, it had taken on, you know, larger meanings, and I think that was, that's pretty clear, and then when you see Marina talking about what she went through, you, you get an idea, a little, some, an idea of what's taking place in the classroom, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> from, um, and, and just to be clear, I think I, I mean we've said this to each other earlier, but just just say it now again. We don't have to make a video about how the tests are keeping people back and the you know performance expectations for teachers and students, which is more than just the tests, right? Um, right. Is keeping voice down and having thirty students when you should have fifteen is. Like, right, and we don't even remember that you should have fifteen. Right? No, um, right. so it's like, but so we don't we don't have to say all that, but it can be there, right? And and just it can be there in 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 how Marina describes and other teachers describe all the ways they find the the ways in, right? Even uh, even though those things are there. Yeah, I. I agree. I, yes, I feel very much, very strongly. Like that seems very true. Karen, were you going to say something, or you're just? Yeah. yeah. So I do think the question of who the audience is for this is really important, and maybe there's a way to shoot a whole bunch of stuff and do some remixes with different audience. But I think it's different if you're targeting sort of the public, and there's some Which sort we, of. I think we are. Let's because good. Ahead. The, well, the so I'll just. From the chat room, um, there's a comment from Christina that teachers aren't the target. The citizens need to be able to see the craft of the teachers. And I think, I think that's huge. And I think somewhere in that, 
you know, I, I hope that if you tell the story of like this, these sort of the stuff that Marina's talking about and these great projects she do, she's doing, I hope that people would say, that's great. Why isn't that, you know, why isn't everybody doing that all the time in their classroom? And I'll just share a story. I just did a post on Digital Is about something that just made me so angry the other day, which was a really, and I'll say this, this I, I, a lot of ignorance on my part in this context, but you can sort of <laughs> see how much that tempers it. But it was a it was a really smart woman who was getting up to make a public speech about something else, and the focus of her speech ended up being how unhappy she was with her kid's school. And you know, I don't, the ignorance is I don't know the school, I don't know the kid, I don't know the teacher, um, but I felt like I felt like I did because what she was mad about was that this this teacher wasn't doing wonderful stuff like this. And I felt like that, you know, I know why they're not doing wonderful stuff because they're being put in this box and like people, it's not, I feel like it's not fair to the educational system or to the public that people don't know that story. So I'll just segue into something which might be related or might be totally they different. Don't know the, they don't know the story of the box or? Of all the restrictions teachers are under. Like, they think that teachers can just do what they want. Why aren't they all doing brilliant work? And I'm telling you, I know so many brilliant teachers who are feeling right now that because of accountability, they can't do brilliant work. And to me, like, so we people do, ought to know so, that so part are you of suggesting the story. That it needs to be in the story more than I was suggesting? More I have than just no in the idea. Background? Okay. I mean, I think the story needs, it, to some extent, we can have goals, but probably the story needs to tell itself from the teachers and the youth who are there and if that's not their story I mean you know maybe uh -huh. this is a video for some other situation but I think that's something that I feel just a lot of emotion about right now and, and it seems like every conversation I hear about education whether it's from teachers or administrators or sort of the media and general public it's this thread that runs through it so I don't know, but a question from the chat, which may or may not be related, but a question from Marina came up about how or if you engaged your administrators in what what you're doing and what this work is like and sort of what was the whole dynamic around that. And I got to say, your administrator is wonderfully unusual, but go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's very open. Um, yeah, I don't know. She she even she knows that I'm like out of the box, and um, at first I kind of had a little bit of a stigma about that. Um, but I think through this past year, I really started to embrace it a lot um, because it, I realized it was really good for the kids. Um, I think that you know. Um, just with, with all the changes, with all the things that are like having to be done, I think that like if it, it, it seems like sh I feel that she appreciates if you can work with it and and find a way for it to be meaningful for for the kids. And um, you know, like I said, the community is very important to me. You know, I don't have kids that are going in and out of my class. I do have them for the whole day. Um, with the exception of their lunch and their 45 minute break. Um, but we do develop relationships, they develop relationships, and um, we learn together. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why this year was hard, but it, it felt successful in another way. Because um, I really felt like I was kind of working with it. And um, I liked mm -hmm. that, I, I did. And say again how you think your principal, do you think she came around more this this year, did you say? And and what was your role in that, do you think? Oh, no. Um, I, think that I, I think I developed more of a relationship with her this year because I kind of, um, I, I went to her and I told her about um, a lot of things from the New York City Writing Project. Um, I told her when... Um, I was invited to be a part of the technology committee and especially with the letters to the next mayor campaign. Um, and, and she listened. She made the time for me and um, she she really, she listened. She, you know, she, so I feel very comfortable talking to her um, about things that I think would be good for the kids. 
And I think just the fact that she listens is enough for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Marina, I'm, I'm so glad you joined us tonight. You um, <laughs> are quite eloquent in your in your descriptions of your classroom. <laughs> Really appreciate it, um, and and thank you, Jim and Monica and Karen as well. Um, the, Monica, do you, do you at least want to say that there's a deadline coming up for the IDEC conference, and then um, and say give the email address for that, or the, I'm sorry, the URL for following up if people would like to. Actually, I'd like to take a second to oh, app do, yeah. applaud and reaffirm what I heard. Um, Marina listening to her kids and then the admin listening to Marina. I mean, that's all it's about. Yeah. And if we listen enough, there's going to be evidence that the people that watch whatever comes out are going to go, we want more of that. And then we can have the conversation about why, you know, how to make it happen more. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate um, it. So, so, so Jim, what, what, uh, okay. Jim, you got a video listening, right? And I'm serious. I'm, how do you how do you videotape listening? But uh, I think it's possible. But, sorry, go ahead, Monica. Yeah. Well, you know, I have yeah. Um, <laughs> the, what's the deadline? Is to register? Is it this Friday? I think so. Yeah. So it's um, so just tell us about I, I, the conference again one more yeah, time. Yeah, it's um, August fourth through eighth in Boulder, Colorado. Um, we have got fifty copy talkers now. They'll just talk for thirty minutes in a really casual, like conversation starter in the morning. Um, and it's very much designed, and we hope to maintain an unconference, you know, um, open space atmosphere where we are just. You know, there's a theme every day, but taking each day as, well, what are you listening? What do you want to do today? What what did you just learn or just meet with? And now what do you want to do with that? You know, and trying to facilitate that. So I'm excited about it. Um, the URL would be, if you just do IDEC, I-D-E-C, IDEC. 2013.org. Thank you. So um, thank you again. Um, I, the next two weeks um, are going to be, uh, Troy Hicks is going to be here talking about his new book, Crafting Digital Writing. Um, and we, I always like giving more than just like one shots to authors. And, and, <laughs> and, and Troy has invited the teachers he, whose work he highlights in that book to come on um, TTT. So excited about that! Uh, do I think I have the title right? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It's crafting digital writing. Uh, look it up on Amazon. Order the book. Read it and uh, join us um, here um, next the next two Wednesdays um, at this time. Um, we uh, broadcast here over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. Thanks to Dave Corbier and Jeff Lebo for um, the community around all of that. And thank you all. Talk to you all soon. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Marina, especially. Everybody in the chat room says thank